What's up, hope kids? I hope you're all well because it's Good Friday and we're going to find out what's so good about it considering what Jesus went through for us. Let's watch together as we watch Jesus on trial before Pontius Pilate, the governor, which is all part of God's plan for Jesus to reach the cross. Early in the morning, Jesus was taken from Caiaphas' house to the governor's palace. The Jewish authorities did not go inside the palace, for they wanted to keep themselves ritually clean in order to be able to eat the Passover meal. So Pilate went outside to them and asked, What do you accuse this man of? We would not have brought him to you if he had not committed a crime. Then you yourselves take him and try him according to your own law. We are not allowed to put anyone to death. This happened in order to make come true what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he would die. Pilate went back into the palace and called Jesus. Are you the king of the Jews? Does this question come from you? Or have others told you about me? Do you think I'm a Jew? It was your own people and the chief priests who handed you over to me. What have you done? My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom belonged to this world, my followers would fight to keep me from being handed over to the Jewish authorities. No. My kingdom does not belong here. Are you a king, then? You say that I am a king. I was born and came into the world for this one purpose. To speak about the truth. Whoever belongs to the truth listens to me. And what is truth? Then Pilate went back outside to the people and said to them, I cannot find any reason to condemn him, but... According to the custom you have, I always set free a prisoner for you during the Passover. Do you want me to set free for you, the King of the Jews? They answered him with a shout. Barabbas was abandoned. Pilate took Jesus and had him whipped. The soldiers made a crown out of thorny branches and put it on his head. Then they put a purple robe on him and came to him and said, Long live the king of the Jews. And they went up and slapped him. Pilate went back out once more and said to the crowd, Look, I will bring him out here to you to let you see that I cannot find any reason to condemn him. Look, here is the man. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him!
take him then and crucify him. I find no reason to condemn him. We have a law that says he ought to die because he claimed to be the son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid. He went back into the palace and asked Jesus, Where do you come from? But Jesus did not answer. He will not speak to me. Remember, I have the authority to set you free and also to have you crucified. You have authority over me only because it was given to you by God. So the man who handed me over to you is guilty of a worse sin. When Pilate heard this, he tried to find a way to set Jesus free. If you set him free, that means you are not the emperor's friend. Anyone who claims to be a king is a rebel against the emperor. Our Bible verse for today is Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5, and this is what it says. But he took her suffering and carried our sorrows for us. We had seen his pain and thought God was punishing him, but he was wounded for our sins. He was crushed for the evil we did. The punishment which made us well was given to him. And we are healed because of his wounds. The time had come. Jesus would be nailed to a cross he was forced to carry his own heavy cross until he fell from the pain and exhaustion. Jesus was so weak that a man named Simon of Cyrene ended up carrying his cross to the top of Golgotha. There at the hill called Golgotha, which means hill of the skull, Jesus was crucified like a criminal. Hanging on the cross for all to see, two thieves hung beside him. This was no place for the Son of God. Jesus' hands and feet were nailed into the cross. The soldiers hoisted the cross into the air, and Pilate hung a sign above his head that read, Here hangs Jesus, the King of the Jews. The religious leaders were furious about this, but Pilate refused to remove the sign. As Jesus hung dying on the cross, the entire land was plunged into darkness even though it was the middle of the day. Then, before Jesus died, he cried out with his last breath, It is finished! Jesus breathed no more. A low rumbling erupted from all around. In Jerusalem's holy temple, the mighty curtain that separated the holiest of holies was torn in half. Many knew that instant that Jesus was truly the Son of God. Jesus had to die to appease God's wrath towards sin. But this was not the end. Jesus would be resurrected after three days to defeat death and sin forever. Hello boys and girls and welcome to Big Bible Words, or BBW for short. We have three big words for you today, and our first word is redemption, which means to buy back. 1 Peter 1, 18-19 says, We were not redeemed by silver or gold, 
but by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, as a lamb without spot or blemish. That is redemption. We have been bought at a price. Now join me over here for our second word. Our second word, boys and girls, is propitiation. Pro what? Propitiation. It means to satisfy anger. But why is this? Well, God is angry at our sin. So Jesus came to take all that anger on to himself for us. Now why don't you join me over here for our final word? And our third word, boys and girls, is reconciliation which means to live at peace with God. But what now? Well, in Colossians 1, 21 to 22, it tells us that for those who believe in Jesus and what he did on the cross, although we were once enemies of God, we are now blameless in his sight and we have reconciliation with God. Now let's say those words again one more time. Redemption, propitiation and reconciliation. Well, that's all from me now, boys and girls. I hope you have a lovely day, and I will see you again soon. Bye! Hey, boys and girls. For today's craft, we're going to make a Calvary hill, as it's Good Friday, and you can see it here. What we're going to need is two paper plates, some glue, some scissors, a piece of card, some felt-up pens and some crayons. To get started, we're going to draw our template first onto our paper plate. So if you turn your paper plate over so it's upside down, we're going to use a pen just so you can see it clearly. We're going to draw our road bits here. If you draw it narrower at the top, and then make it wider at the bottom to make it look like it's going away into the distance. So it'll be something like this. You can make it as wide and as narrow as you want to. Now we're going to colour this in brown and we're going to colour everything else round about it in green. Now, what I've done, I've used crayons because it's easier than using felt up pens. But if you've got felt up pens and you want to use them, you can use your felt up pens. So you colour in your road here and then everything else round about it will be green. And it'll look something like this. And then what we're going to do after that is we're going to put the, the hill on. So to make the hill, we're going to use another paper plate. And again, we're going to turn it over. And the rim plate here is what we're going to use because it'll give you a perfect circle. So if you cut it out round about the rim of your plate. And first, not a rim on your plate like that. You could draw around about a bowl or something else round that you've got. Yeah. And we can dispose of this bit because we won't need it instead of What we've got here is a circle. We're going to fold it in half. And it's going to stick on to your plate just at the top of your path. It's going to stick on just about here, as you can see. And we need to continue our path up a little bit more. So, if you line it up with your path that you've already got to make sure that it matches. And you just continue up to here. And you can just do a little bit here, and we're going to do that around as well. So, all of this bit here, and all of this bit here will be brown. And then all of these bits here. We can do for example of one that I did earlier just here and then after we've done that we're going to stick it on so we fold it in half we're going to put glue onto the white side so this side's not going to be and then we're going to match up our paths together we're just matching it like that and then up and push down. So we've got our hill and our path and all we need to get after that is the crosses. So to get the crosses the same size as each other it's easier if you get a template and you draw around about it. So I'll just use one of my crosses just now and I'll show you what I mean. So if you 
roll it about three across three times and then you can colour it in and then you can cut them out and they'll all be the same size. It just makes it a little bit neater. Once you've cut them out, you're going to glue them onto the top of the half. So fold it back down. Just get your crosses with you. The middle one first, so look this one first. And we'll pop it up here. And then we'll put one either side. And once you've finished adding your crosses, you can add flowers or trees or whatever you fancy adding onto the grass parts to make it your own. But this is quite a Calvary hill. Enjoy making your craft boys and girls. Bye!
Jesus rose again. Jesus is alive. Jesus rose again. Jesus is alive. Jesus rose again. My Jesus is alive. Well, boys and girls, that's all we have time for today. But please join us for part two on Easter Sunday. And remember, as always, read God's Word, listen to God's Word, and stay strong in God's Word. Goodbye.